Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I will be putting together my spring junk journal in collaboration with Emily at Emily's Paper Caper here on YouTube. So what I decided to do was use these two paper sacks. I thought they were really cute with the polka dots. And I'm reinforcing them by putting some of the I used one of the coloring book page, the covers from the coloring book page, and I'm putting glue on those and just putting that on the inside there. Because the paper sacks are a little flimsy, but for a traveler's notebook size junk journal, which this is about what this size is, um, this is perfect. And so I'm cutting the bottom little lip there to make that a pocket, and I'm going to glue on the inside just to add some more stability and to glue the edges that pop out. I just want this to be a little smooth pocket on the inside. And then there also be a little tuck in the very back of that. So that's the bottom of the lunch sack. I'm just gluing all the little noodly bits on the bottom there. And I'll be covering up the flaps that you see. I put two little lines of glue on the sides there, and so that makes a tiny little tuck. And then inside where I cut, that makes a bigger pocket. So there's essentially two little pockets when this is all said and done. All right, moving on, I'm using those note cards there, and I'm going to do some layering with the note cards to add some color, and then I will decorate that. So I'm trying to match the colors to my little stickers there, and trying to decide how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to rip the edges, and first start off by covering that the whole section, leaving a little bit of the yellow around as a border. And I'm going to do the same on both pockets. And then I'll move on to another color here. I think I'm going to be using these little dragonflies. So I'm going to tear a section of the yellow. This will be a little bit smaller and that will go right on top and I'll leave a border of the blue. I was able to use quite a bit of these note cards throughout the book just to make embellishments and pockets and tags and things like that. So. I really love that little pack of note cards. And what's nice is that there's lines on one side and it's blank on the other. So, you know, the very versatile for a junk journal. So now I'll go and glue each of these pieces down. I love this layering. It just adds more texture and I can coordinate the colors well with the stickers. So I'll just add a flower and a dragonfly to each side. And then now I'm going to work on attaching my front and back cover and I'm going to use this floral piece of fabric that came in the little packaging or the little package of fabrics from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to use a piece of that coloring book it was the cover I just cut the edge off there and then I'm going to use the other side of this one I just wanted to add in some green to kind of coordinate in with the green in the in the fabric. I 
I'm putting glue down and then attaching or putting down the fabric on that. I went in about a half of an inch and then a half inch on the other side. At first I was going to cut this fabric at the top there, but I decided I was going to wrap it around and then go in on the other side, just like that. So it adds more stability on the inside. So I'm putting glue a half inch in on both sides and then I'll put my fabric down and I wasn't sure at first if I was going to go all the way down to the very bottom with this but I decided to and so I moved that flower and I'll just go ahead and glue it and then I'll put the flower back down here in a second. And then now I'll just trim the excess off at the bottom. So there is my cover. Now I'm going to add the strips of green to decorate the outside. So I'll glue that right next to the edge of the fabric trim it off at the ends and then I'll add the other piece. Now this piece does have a little bit of printing at the end there but I do cut most of it off and then I cover it with the ribbon so that isn't a big deal. I'm going to add in the ribbon on the left side or kind of inside there. This is a grow grain ribbon so it's a little bit thicker so I don't have to smooth out my glue. You can't really see it a whole lot so that was nice. So I'm putting my ribbons down and then I'll go ahead and trim off at the ends. And I did decide to leave a couple, a little bit hanging off the top. Now I'm using this book page cover that she put in my kit and I'm cutting out the letters to spell spring. And what I want to do with this is make a little banner on the front of the cover. And at first I thought I was going to use that book cover for the actual cover of my journal, but I kind of wanted to um, just kind of try something different by making the lunch sack the cover. So then I thought this would be perfect to cut the letters out and the colors are perfect. So that's what I did with this. And then I did use the rest of the covers, cover pieces within the book as a tag and I think a journaling card. So I'm just kind of evening out the border around the letters and then arranging the way I want them to be on the book. Of course they can't go perfectly straight across and I didn't want them to go vertically so I just kind of made them in a little arch or a little swag I guess. So now I'm punching two holes along the tops of each of them and then I'll take my the twine that Emily gave me. It's pink and white and I will string them through the holes at the top. So I'm going up through the back and then down so that the twine shows on the top. And what I did with the end with, of the twine was add a little dab of glue so it makes it easier to push through these holes because the holes are tinier than, the, it's my tiniest hole on my crocodile, and if you don't have a crocodile, the crocodile has two size holes on it, two hole punches, and the one is, I don't even know, it. the biggest hole is a little bit smaller than a regular hole punch. I think it's an eighth of an inch 
or a little bit smaller and then the tiny hole is even tinier than that I'm not really sure what size it is but it is pretty tiny so with the twine it tends to unravel so you do need to put some glue on the end to keep it from unraveling so now I'm just going to position all of my letters my little banner pieces and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to decorate the front cover before I glue it down so I kind of like this layout, but I'm just looking to see which embellishments I want. So I'm adding flowers and butterflies. And another dragonfly at the top, or a dragonfly at the bottom. So I really like that, so I'm going to go ahead and glue each little banner piece down. And then what I'm going to do is clip it off on the side and go ahead and stick the twine in on the, on the inside there. But I am going to add in a ribbon, so I'm going to cut my ribbon and glue that on the inside. Now, the in, what I mean by the inside is that on a lunch stack, of course, it opens up wide, but when you have it folded up, there's a little side piece in there, so that makes for a perfect little spot to glue in my ribbons on my journal. So I'm going to add the glue in there and glue it shut so it makes it one solid cover there. And then I will add in my ribbon on the back cover. Make sure that they're both the same, like distance or the same spot, I suppose. And then add more glue. Now I'm just using some of these little, they're little jewel stickers, I guess, glitter stickers. They're puffy, and I'm adding those to the book. I do add them along the ribbon there, but then I decided I didn't like them in the end. But I did add them to the butterfly and the flower and the dragonfly, and I did keep those. So. These are just a quick little embellishment that you can use to add some dimension to your projects. And they do have all the colors that I needed that matched my project. I completed my cover, so I'm moving into putting the pages in the book. So I just, I had pulled all of these out that I wanted to use. And so now I'm just attaching them together with the with these two dictionary pages. I'm using some of the washi tape stickers and attaching those. I put some on the outside and then some on the inside. And then I'm going to attach a couple of these animal pages. Really cute. I want to make sure that they're the right size, the right width, so I'm cutting them down a little bit. And then I'll do the same with the washi tape. Another way you can do this is just using a piece of thin paper and folding it in half. You can glue that or sew it on. I've done that quite a bit. Or you can use a regular roll of washi tape and do the same thing and you'll be able to go all the way down the edge of the paper. I'm going to do the same with this music sheet or the music pages.
I think these are so cute. I just noticed that one of them was about Peter Rabbit or the little rabbit, and then the other one was singing in the rain. So I thought that was perfect. When I first opened up the box of this, I didn't even notice that. I, did a, I decided to cut this piece lengthwise just to make more because I noticed that I was going to be attaching a lot of my pages this way just because I wanted them to be the right direction and I didn't want to run out of the washi tape. For this one I wanted to keep the bunny and I decided to cut around in a circle just to make this a different shape. I like doing that, making my pages different heights, different, different widths, and different shapes just to add different, you know, the different look to it. It kind of adds to being that junk, junk flavor or junk aesthetic <laughs> as opposed to just exactly the same. I really like these little washi tape stickers. They just, I don't know, the, the pictures are really pretty on them and they're so easy to use. They stick really well, but you could also pick them up easily if you need to move them because it is a washi. But I know I have some washi tapes that are just don't stick at all really. And I've used them, but then I have to go back in with glue to actually make them stay. Now I'll go ahead and take the composition, or these, what are they called? Handwriting tablet, I guess, and I folded those. And then with these pages, I wanted to color them. And so I'm using my, um, wash, my watercolor palette and going in to just, just to do a quick coloring of the page. I know I can, I could get more detailed with everything on here, but I just want it to be rather quick process, but add the bright colors to it that are in my book. And I have a little helper there. So I went in with the yellow and kind of added yellow on certain areas of the page. I'll link this set of watercolors down below. This is the, oh, was it Tama, Tama something. Tom, it's a Japanese set of watercolors and I really love them. They have awesome pigments and just this set is great. It has all different colors. And so, yeah, I'll link this one. I just don't remember the name <laughs> and I don't want to mispronounce it. So Now I'm going in with the pink. I decided to color two sets, so that's how they turned out there. I didn't want to bore you with watching me color all of that, but now I'm going to fold them in. I did fold it in on one side. I can make that a tuck or just have it be able to fold out on the page and then now I'm going to cut these crossword puzzle pages down kind of trim them up make them a little bit even more even and then I folded them vertically now I have all my pages cut and folded now I just need to assemble them, so I kind of put them in piles. This one I accidentally taped three together, but that's okay. I left it that way. And then I'll go and add each page kind of um, 
alternating different styles of pages, plain, book pages, things like that. And then do the same with the second stack. And then go ahead and stick them in my cover. Now I need to, you know, I try and rearrange them the way I like them there. Depending on the width, I wanted to make them kind of even on the side. Now what I need to do is attach my pages into the cover. So I'm using large paper clips and I'm attaching them all along the edges. I do need to, I do remember that I do need to attach this to my cover. So I added that into the cover and now I'm adding in the paper clips again. So now I'm taking my paper piercer, piercing down the center, and then on the two ends, kind of doing it evenly. I didn't measure it, I just kind of eyeballed it, but I went in the middle and then about an inch and a half from the ends. And I'm taking my large eye needle and putting my twine in there. I go three times the, top, the height of the book. That's about how much you need. I'm going through the center hole and then I go back through the top hole into the center and then I go all the way down to that bottom hole out the back and then you go into the center again. This is a little bit trickier. Sometimes the hole gets off, like not lined up, so you kind of have to go back in with your needle, adjust it to get it back in there, to push it through there. And then what you want to make sure is you have one, one end on one side of that middle thread and then one end on the other side. And then you tie a double knot and then a bow. And that is how you do a pamphlet stitch. I do have other videos on this if you want like a slower broken down version. I'll try and find it, but that is my little journal. So next you will see how to make the embellishments and then the final flip through. So go ahead and follow my channel as well as Emily's Paper Caper and you will see how our journal progresses. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment and subscribe and I will see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Practicality. Bye. God bless.